Okay, today's goopy project is adding a little more advance in a uh, Volkswagen 009 distributor. This is one I just took apart recently to show you the uh, sequence of parts and also because I took another one apart and forgot where the shims and stuff went. And this is the one I'm working on. There you go, part number and 009. This one is a Bosch German made one. This one here is probably an aftermarket since where it should be stamped German, it's just smooth. But anywho, and I noticed there's some difference on this one. Um, so, to get them apart, let me grab another one. I have so many of these. This one here turns really stiff, so it needs to be checked out. Uh, Judging by the stamp, it's probably German. Anywho, here's an assembled one with the, uh, the clamp on it. First of all, you got this weird spring retainer. That's it's actually really easy to get. It's just just pick it, find the end, and pick it out and unwind it. And then once you get that out, you'll see it has a pin that's pressed in there. You can use a multiple of punches. Since I didn't have one that was long enough, that one started to get, and then I found another one that was able to push it all the way out. Actually, yeah, I think this one worked better. Just the tip was so small and hard to keep it centered, so the big one got it out. And then once you pull that off, you can see the hole that goes in here. Oh look, I didn't take all the shims off this one. It had multiple more shims. I'm sure it has to be pro properly shimmed. So you see that one had three more shims on there. And then it had a type of plastic this washer you can see is busted. And then it had another shim on the base of the body here. That there is because it had, uh, not points, it had petronics. And then on the inside here, we had another big shim that typically goes towards the body on either side, but this was on the inside. Another one of these fiber washers. And then another shim. So, it comes apart pretty easy. The pin is the trickiest part getting that pin out of there. Having it held solid while you beat it out helps. I'm going to clean this one up and we'll be rebuilding it for a friend. But the real reason I'm doing this is, like I said, I'm trying to get more advance out of it. The one in my bug right now only well, has about 15, 16 degrees of advance. Uh, to get the total de degree of advance, anywhere from 28 to 32. I like 32. The bug's running really good with 32. My timing is like, I'm only guessing because I don't have a proper degree pulley on it. I was using a fancy timing light at work and it said it was around around 16 degrees initial advance at idle. So what I'm doing is a trick I used to do in my Demolition Derby days. On uh, You can buy recurve kits for HEIs because um, from with running in a derby car with a vacuum advance, the vacuum advance module gets in the way of a distributor protector. So you can take it off, but then you lose some advance and it doesn't run as great. You have to, like I said, you'd have to have so much initial advance at idle and I tend to like to have it lower so you can maintain a low, you know, a lower, smoother, smoother idle. Anyways, and then the, how this came apart, like this one's still together. This one was a bit tricky. I think putting it back together is going to be a lot of fun. I don't know if you can see in there. Oh, that's got the uh, 
that's the lube the points you can fill that with oil and it gets drips down the body here and lubes the points I'm not running points anymore because they're a pain in the ass let's see where's my parts list uh oh that really suck if I dump the stuff out and lost the tiny little clip wouldn't it or is it about this no it's over here I'll show you the difference in these two weights I didn't realize these are there's the that tiny little strange clip that goes I'll pull it apart here in a moment Yeah, hard to see. There you go. Well, you see how this comes apart. So, let's show you how one works. Now, if you're going to take this apart, you're going to find that it has one spring. And I just figured out why it has one spring. This one is different than my other one. This one, the spring on this one, this lesser quality, I would say, because it's not German, doesn't have an extra weight on this advance that's attached to the spring. This one over here doesn't need a spring because it's lower. It's supposed to be lower weighted, so you got this initial advance because this only goes so far. When this one goes, and this one here with the spring weight it goes even farther. And if you noticed, that one's no longer touching. In fact, there's quite a big gap. So this one with a little more boot on it. Actually, well, let me put it that way, but you see, it doesn't, it stops touching. But anyways, yeah, so it's actually a dual system. So this one, without the weight, or without the spring, and sometimes you'll find it like the other one has, so I'll show you in a moment. Maybe I could find it right here. It's got an extra weight on it. So anyways, actually, yeah, that's the wrong side. That's actually a, not a weight, it's a... It's like a, if you see it on the bottom, it's got a, like this plastic piece here that's got guides on it too. But anyways, yeah. So this one's no spring, sometimes has more weight, or vice versa. Maybe the weight goes on the side. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Without the spring, this one comes in first and faster. And then as the engine continues to climb in RPMs, it overcomes that spring tension. And this one goes. So... You would think that, like, if you set your timing at the zero to seven and a half, whatever the range is, that's what it used to be about zero to seven and a half, depending on the year of the bug. Well, you could possibly only end up with 16 degrees of a total advance, which isn't good enough. And you're like, your first impression will be, how do I make this go farther? Well, it has these limiters here, which will come in handy later, maybe, but you possibly bend those. But this also can only turn so far. And I don't know if I can hold it open and turn it. It bottoms out. So you did be thinking, oh, we'll have to grind that out. Well, that's good. more work than you need to do. If you notice, fully closed, if I can get a good shot here, that there's plenty of room to go backwards. And that's actually the trick I used to do all the time. Set that in the wrong right place. It's a trip I used, trick I used to do all the time with the HEI distributors. I wouldn't add more advance. I'd give it the ability to go, say, give it more retard or start off with it tighter. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here. If you look, come on, camera. You can kind of see my black mark there that I made the shape of the weight that moves it. And the same thing over here. So basically what I'm going to do. Lovely camera. You don't want to work today. But anyways, I'm going to grind. I'm going to grind some off. And give it um, an extra amount of advance. Or sorry, not advance. Retard. So that way it starts off 16 degrees uh, less or retarded. It's, that's giving it a total of. 16 16 hey wait a minute that's 32 there you go so yeah and if somehow i goof up and i go too far it's going to be a lot of fun taking a part in that and putting it back together you can always bend these limiters see these limiters are used on when you get to find a good hei or not hei 
or whatever. When you put these on turbo, sometimes they run these on turbo cars and they need to make sure the advance doesn't go too crazy. They can back it down with that. You can limit it. But anywho, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this over the bench, grind those down, and we'll see how that works in a few. Okay, before I go any farther, I've already modified it, but then I forgot one key crucial step here. And luckily, when I was trying to take the other one apart, I couldn't get it loose and I ended up bending it and damaging it. But it's a good thing. The one thing I did remember to do, but I forgot to tell you, was to, you can see this is offset. Uh, you need to mark that before you take this whole distributor apart. You can see this one's marked there. Secondly, I actually took this off without marking it. Because it needs to go in the exact spot, because otherwise, you know, this could be on the other side. So luckily, yeah, I bent this one so I can use the differences or the... You know, it's, this is different left to right, so I can tell which way it's supposed to go back together since I snafooed it. Okay, so the next step, let me put that over there. The next step was, uh, let me go back to what I sh did. As you can see there, I ground it, and you notice, if you can tell, that the tips are a little bit rounded off because I noticed it was hanging up on this one so and I just went ahead and did both sides so and I almost forgot one step but it didn't really matter because let's put this on here so as I told you this that the reason that, that you know, it's nearly impossible to get more advanced because you'd have to the, the, this body would have to be ground out so the pegs could go farther well the sec second problem with my way was okay so I ground this off well then in theory when this moved to the same position it was before it's still not going any farther it's still only going 15 degrees so the next step that you can do easily because it's designed in these distributors and let me send this one, sure, send this one this way and that one that way if you look at this limiting tab here how much shorter that one is now I didn't cut it down. What I did is ended up flattening it out. So essentially, these weights can now go farther than they did before, and then they hit the stops. Let's just do it with that hand. So yeah, so these go can go farther before they hit the stops because they're basically bent out farther and then bent up using a vice grip and a pair of channel locks. So, no, you're not, you're not like, well, did this do any good? Yeah, it did. Because if you remember before, that's as far limited as you can go forward. That did not technically change. What changed is, when we turn it back to the fully closed position, if you remember, I do, that those were about, those were almost exactly in the halfway mark. Well, now they're almost close enough to, it looks better on this side, I can get some light going, that that one almost hits the stop going the other way. So you can tell that's how much more closed, let's call it closed, these weights can go. These weights, the weights themselves aren't closing anymore. They sort of are, which actually is happening is this is allowed to go just that much farther this way. It's still called it closed. So there you go. That's basically how it works. Same way as a Chevy, but I said there's more steps. Now I'll show you something else I came across. And it wasn't really hitting, but I was worried. Now with this fully open, this one's not a problem since I said this one's initial. And fully open, you'll notice. Even though I ground it, I kept about the same distance on both sides, so that stays open just as much as it did before, since this is one that gives the initial advance, and then this one goes full advance. What I noticed was, I had it in the housing, I tested it, that I had to grind the edges down, because now it's closer to even with that line, or this, the, this part of the body. I might have went a little extreme, but I checked again, and it's still pretty close, but it doesn't hit. It was, wasn't was really hitting before. It kind of did not hit, but if I pushed, if it wobbled to the edge, 
and you can feel it slightly scraping. It might have wore itself in, but taking just a little bit of the weight off isn't going to hurt how much weight's on there. I went semi-high tech. My grinder left too rough an edge, so then I took the grinder, got it down where I wanted, took a file to it, and then I scotch brighted it. But there you go. That's pretty much all that needs to be done to do this little modification I've created here. So, now it's just left is uh, put the spring back on it. That might be an issue if the spring can't stretch that far. You might have, might have to go to a lighter spring, but because the coil spring will, the farther a coil spring goes, the more what they call it, spring tension will have, or there's another word for it, but I forget. Anyways, it does. As you pull, as you compress this coil spring, it gets stiffer and stiffer and stiffer. It's kind of the same way when you stretch it. It's going to do the same thing. But anyways, it should work. This is all, you know, backyard science. It won't be able to be proven until I install it in the car, go to work, and then uh, check my total advance with the fancy timing light at work. I can set it here with the static. I can only set the initial static, and then at work I'll check and see how the... Um, I forget the word of it. Total total advance is so hopefully. Hopefully, when I go to work, I'll set the little dial which is on there. I can set it to 32, rev my engine, and make sure the timing mark goes where it's supposed to. But that's pretty much it. Um, I've already Vaseline. I'm using Vaseline, Vaseline, all these points. This little sucker. The only thing that's going to stink is getting that little bitty clip and washer back in there. Hopefully, it goes smoothly because otherwise. Um, this ain't gonna work, but anyways, because if this comes flying up, yeah, you imagine that couple coming up flying off and can timing ain't gonna be that good, or if it's even moving. So, anywho, there you go, that's pretty much it. Now it's just a matter of reversing the sequence, putting this back together, uh, swapping in my breaker plate that has the Petronics already hooked up to, and giving it a go, see how it goes. I will uh, do a video after the fact. Of like hey it worked hey it didn't work so that's about it so i'll let you know in a couple days see ya